Being a family of four, in both our vans, we've had to look at ways where we're all comfortable to travel safely. So we did a lot of research. In this video, I'll share that with you to help you decide how best to add additional travel seats to your van. So stay with us. Don't miss any of our regular videos by hitting that subscribe button now. You can also check out our website at explorevan.uk for more details on our vans, trips and all the products we talk about. Having spent a lot of my younger years travelling around the UK and Europe in the boot of an S8 car, being the youngest of a family of six, as much as anyone I appreciate that travelling unrestrained in a vehicle is not guaranteed to kill you. However, things do move on as we no longer think asbestos is safe, cigarettes are healthy, or lead paint on toys is a good idea. The need for seatbelts in the back of a motorhome is an emotive and controversial topic. I'll try to share the information I researched impartially and let you make up your own mind what you should do. All my research is based on the UK and other countries inevitably will have different regulations and propensity to enforce them. So be sure to consider that if you're travelling further afield. There are quite a few things to consider, so let's split this into two parts. Do I need seatbelts in the back? And then we'll look at how can I fit seatbelts. Legally, few areas are black and white, but let's start with one that is. Seatbelt law states, if you intend to carry children aged under 12 years in any vehicle, they must wear a suitable child restraint. As these can't be fitted to side facing seats, you would need to have a forward or rear facing seat with a three point seat belt for every child. For anyone 12 or over, vehicles manufactured after January 2006 must have at least two point safety belts for all designated travel seats. The seats that are designated for travel must be identified and rear passengers are required to use designated seats and seat belts. Sideways seats cannot be designated as travel seats. For vehicles built before 2006, all forward and rear facing travelling seats must have seat belts. Although side facing seats with or without seat belts are not illegal, they are not designed to be used with seat belts. In the event of an accident, seat belts on these side facing seats may help to prevent the wearer being thrown around the vehicle or from being ejected, but in a frontal crash, they can actually increase the risk of injury. As side facing seats are less safe both with and without a seat belt, pretty much everywhere official you look will advise you not to travel with passengers in side facing seats. So for older vehicles, it's not quite black and white, but there are other things you need to consider. There are other laws not specific to seatbelts that it's possible you could be prosecuted for if you are stopped or have an accident with unrestrained passengers of any age in the vehicle. Regulation 100 of the Road Vehicles Construction and Use Regulations 1986 may apply. This requires the number of passengers carried and the manner in which any passengers are carried in or on a vehicle to be at all times such that no danger is caused or is likely to be caused to any person in or on a vehicle. Section 40A of the Road Traffic Act 1988 states that a person is guilty of an offence if he uses or causes or permits another to use a motor vehicle or trailer on a road when the number of passengers carried by it or the manner in which they are carried is such that the use of the motor vehicle or trailer involves a danger of injury to any person. So the actual offences you could be prosecuted for are failing to carry passengers as to avoid danger or as an insecure load. Should the worst ever happen and you're involved in an accident with an unrestrained passenger, you may be liable to prosecution for causing death by dangerous driving or causing grievous bodily injury by dangerous driving. As I think we all know, most insurance companies will find any reason not to honour a claim. Where a vehicle is being used outside of the criteria it was designed for, i.e. carrying more passengers than travelling seats with suitable belts, this may well give them an opportunity to void a claim. So to be safe, make sure to check with your insurance company how they would react to your plans for how you'll carry passengers. So the deciding factors for us were could we have lived with ourselves if anything happened? You may be the safest driver on the road, but that doesn't allow for the many other drivers on the road that could cause an accident that you end up involved in. If you or a member of your family are injured or killed having not been wearing a suitable belt, would you be able to stop yourself thinking, what if I'd fitted a suitable belt? 
as we always travel as a family, the seating that we put in would have been in regular use. Although there's only a low risk of getting stopped and questionably a low risk of being prosecuted, our lives revolve around being able to drive and the risk of any points or prosecution for any motoring offence is something we'll always do our best to avoid to keep our licences and our insurance premium reasonable. As we have kids that were under 12, we need to ensure we have three point belt seating options for them and the driver. Whilst with just the front double passenger seat and driver's seat, we had enough belts and it's possible one of the adults could sit in the back without a belt, we wanted to be able to give the kids the option where they sat and rotate positions to give people variation on long drives. And finally, our research showed it wasn't as expensive as we thought it would be to do it right. So, what are the options for retrofitting seat belts? As any installed seat belts are tested during the MOT, they need to be installed to meet the MOT criteria. For us, the seating options were as follows. Additional seats with integral belts, often available on eBay, listed as ambulance seats, jump seats or bus seats. There are a number of manufacturers that provide seats with integral three-point seat belts. Rock and roll beds with seat belts. If you are fitting a rock and roll bed in your conversion, these are available with integral three point seat belts. You can build a seat belt frame into your custom build of seating. These are a metal frame that includes all the belts and the mounting points, allowing you to build your seating to suit you around the frame. For each of these, they just need to be installed to meet MOT test requirements. Alternatively, you could speak to one of a few retrofitting seatbelt companies that you could work with to install suitable belts to your existing seating. So for us, both of our vans have had additional travelling seats with integral belts. To avoid problems when it comes to MOT time, we had them fitted by the garage where we have our MOTs completed, which cost around £100 in parts and labour. For you, it's your choice. My advice is to take in all the information you can, do your research, consider the risks, look at the options and make your choice. Many people choose to break the speed limits, some choose not to wear a seatbelt even when it's fitted, and some will undoubtedly carry unrestrained passengers in their vehicle. At the end of the day, the only person who can decide if you're comfortable to do that is you. I do hope that this video helps you make a choice and whatever you choose, that you have safe travels. Thanks for watching our video and as always, if you have any questions or feedback, please pop them in the comments below. If you find the video useful, please like, share and consider subscribing.